How do you force appreciation in a multifamily asset? How do you improve the value so you can profit? Well, in this video, I'm going to be walking you through the system of forcing appreciation in multifamily real estate and also go into the huge impact force appreciation can have on your bottom line. So make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss more videos about building wealth through multifamily real estate. I'm Seth Ferguson. Let's get right into it and talk about forcing appreciation in multifamily. To start off, I'm going to go into the two components of forcing appreciation, then we'll look at the actual bottom line impact it has and uh, how you can actually profit from it. So what is forcing appreciation? Well, it all comes back to how multifamily real estate is valued and multifamily real estate is valued based on the income approach. And I'll put a link right up here to a video I did explaining all about it. So in a nutshell, the value of the property is uh, is derived from the amount of net operating income, the cash flow, the property produces. Uh, think of it this way, and this is what I always say. We're buying a business that just happens to be tied to real estate. So the income is what really matters. So forcing the appreciation is all about driving that NOI up uh, through improvements uh, to improve the NOI the property is, uh, is giving off. And then that in turn will improve uh, the uh, value of the asset. So like I said, there are two components. So we've got physical on this side. And maybe Francis, uh, my editor, can add in, let's get physical. Oh no, that would get a copyright strike. We can't do that. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no. So uh, we have physical and then we have uh, operations. So what sort of physical improvements can we do to force the appreciation? Well, there are a whole lot. So uh, number one, we can do renos. And uh, we can do renos uh, on the interior. Well, they're interior and exterior. I don't know why I'm trying to write these out right now. Uh, so interior, exterior, the, how these actually drive in, because like we're putting in CapEx, uh, we're, we're spending money to renovate uh, the property. And you might be thinking, okay, well, we're putting money in. How do we actually get money out? Well, here's the thing. Once we improve the interior and or the exterior of the property, we'll uh, be able to raise the rent. So the whole idea behind the value add system is finding a property that's operating below market standard, and then we can bring it up to market standards. So maybe uh, we have an 80s construction property. Uh, it has been renovated in about 20 years. The kitchens are old and tired. And all of a sudden down the street, we have a newer property that has been renovated. And there's about a $250 a month uh, rent improvement with the other property. Well, now we can go in, acquire the uh, former property um, that needs some renovation, do the work. Obviously, we have to model and underwrite the deal to make sure it makes sense. But we're going to do the work and now we have a comparable property to the one down the street. So if they're getting the $250 rent improvement, well, chances are we can too. Uh, so now we're able to boost up that NOI $250 a month across uh, X number of units that we have. This is how we boost up the NOI with renovations. Uh, we can also do uh, conversions. We were actually just looking at a deal like this one uh, where you had uh, formerly they were all uh, there were a bunch of one bedroom units, but then they were uh, the, no the wall was knocked down. They made them into two bedroom units, reconfigured it. Well, uh, you know, if you take a look at it, uh, maybe you can actually uh, get more money, uh, more cash flow, more NOI um, if you convert those units back to one bedrooms. Uh, it's all going to depend on your tenant profile and all that sort of stuff. But uh, this definitely helps. We also have landscaping. Tenants want to live in a nice property. Who wants to live in a dump? Uh, so if you can acquire property that needs some uh, TLC on the exterior, maybe you can uh, resurface the pool, um, you know, all around the outside, add some trees, some shrubbery, uh, you know, uh, do some uh, uh, driveway improvements, parking lot improvements, that sort of thing. Well, a nicer property, tenants will pay more to live in a nicer place. So these are all physical improvements that we can do. And of course, the list goes on and on and on. You can add storage facilities. Uh, you can have a uh, covered parking, all that sort of stuff. Now on the operational side, uh, the number one thing is we can raise rents. Um, that is uh, the easiest thing to do. Um, if uh, the former owner wasn't keeping up with their rent increases and you're acquiring this property and it's under market rent, well, you can just increase the rents. Um, that is the easiest thing to do. And then we have uh, staff. 
Uh, you can change up the staff, you can change up the organizational structure of the staff at the property. Maybe you bring in a new leasing manager that can convert uh, leads, potential uh, tenants at a higher rate. That's going to uh, make you a lot more efficient. Maybe you can change the maintenance planning, all that sort of stuff uh, goes into that. And then we have uh, advertising um, and marketing. Uh, maybe the former owner wasn't doing a good job and you have some vacancy, you can go in, uh, implement your marketing plan, uh, your package that you do, um, and uh, you can uh, generate more leads, uh, better quality leads, and then convert those at a higher percentage. And that is going to boost your NOI because we're going to lower expenses. And speaking of expenses, uh, we can optimize expenses. So you can implement a rubs program uh, to uh, build back utilities to the tenant if that's included in your rent. That's certainly a great thing to do, especially now uh, with the way inflation in, is, uh, is going. Uh, we have all sorts of different options on both the physical side and the operational side. And uh, also with branding, you know, we can change the name of the property, increase the signage, better signage still signs are probably the best uh, form of advertising we have. So uh, putting up a new signage, making the property look a whole lot nicer, you're going to be attracting a different tenant profile. All these things do is drive up the NOI, the net operating income. And I'll put a link right up here to a video I did going more in depth into the value add uh, strategy um, because this is just kind of a surface level thing. Now, what sort of impact does increasing the NOI have on the value of the property? I wanna run through an example with you. So uh, let's say the market cap rate is 4%, uh, just to keep things nice and uh, simple. And I'll do a link right up here uh, to a video I did explaining all about cap rates. Uh, so you can check that out. So we'll do a, a market cap rate of $4 million. Now let's say we are able to improve our NOI of $1 million by 20%. So that will make it 1.2 million in NOI, which we are able to do. Um, so uh, we have improved the NOI, cap rate stays the same at 4%. What is the impact on our, the valuation of our property. Well, the value of the property now goes from 25 million to 30 million. We have manufactured, we have forced the appreciation of the asset $5 million. So not only do we get to enjoy the increased NOI on a monthly basis, but we also have an increased value of the property by 5 million bucks. Now let's say hypothetically, and these are all uh, just example numbers. So, you know, we could have be working this out with a cap rate of four and a half percent, five percent, you name it. Let's say hypothetically for this example, because I just picked a 4% cap rate. Let's say that this is for a, a B minus property in this particular market. And uh, through our renovations, we're able to take the property from a B minus to let's say a B, B plus. Uh, so we're improving the property through our renovations and our plan. It's not going to be valued uh, differently because uh, we've been able to move it to a different category. So we've gone from a B minus, let's say to a B plus. And let's say hypothetically for this example, uh, the market cap uh, for this type of property uh, is three and a half percent. So what happens? So we have improved the property here. So our NOI is $1.2 million. And now we're being valued at a three and a half percent cap rate. Our value of, for the property, it's now not $30 million. So we've improved it from 25 to 30. Our improved value is now $34.2 million. So by doing the right renovations, by taking a property from let's say a B minus asset to a, um, uh, to a B plus asset uh, from a 4% to a three and a half, the value of the asset has increased substantially. So this is the power of the value add strategy. Now, obviously the market cap rates are going to be dependent on your specific market. All that stuff is going to depend on the specific deal and your market, but this is a great example showing you how we can force appreciation, how we can drive the value through the NOI by making smart renovations, both on the physical side and the operational side. And if you want to learn more about this, you need to come to the multifamily conference. It's May 14th and 15th. 2022, uh, we have the top speakers from across Canada and the United States. We've got uh, Joe Fairless coming in. He's almost at 2 billion in multifamily assets. We've got Kevin O'Leary coming in talking about capital. We've got uh, Pierre Paul Turgeon underwriting and modeling and many, many more. Check out multifamilyconference.ca and reserve your ticket now. This is exactly what we're talking about there. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you can join my free Facebook group uh, link down right below. It's a great group of people. And uh, if you like this video, 
hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and until next time, happy investing. <laughs>